Hi, this is LJ Boffo, and this is a video about Microsoft PowerPoint's user interface. It's being done in Windows, so some of the things will be in different places on Mac or other operating systems. So I'm in my desktop. I'm going to go over to my Start menu and search for PowerPoint, which you could do on Windows or a Mac in your own respective uh, Start sections. PowerPoint. When PowerPoint opens, it will look an awful lot like Word in Excel's opening starter area. You can do a blank document, which in PowerPoint is called a presentation, meaning a presentation for a slideshow, and then some various templates. We're going to open a blank presentation and take a look just at the user interface. So the user interface provides the usual top bar of the program that allows for some quick quick tools to be posted up here by your preferences, the name of the file, once you name it, a search button, um, your account information, the ability to collapse or to show your tabs and ribbons and to get Microsoft help. Then you have the various menu tab items with their respective ribbons of icons and options to uh, select for doing different types of work. You have the workspace, which will be the slide itself, one slide at a time. These aren't documents or spreadsheet worksheets. This is just one slide at a time. And then on the left-hand side, there will be a sort of a slide organizer where you could preview slides. You can actually make it bigger by dragging so if, if you'd like to see a little bit larger, you can, or you can make it very small, although it may or may not be terribly helpful to you. I'm going to keep it at just sort of roughly the default size. Then at the bottom, you have your status bar, which gives you the chance to view different uh, options for your slideshow, including the notes page that can be created. We're in the normal view. You can look at a slide sorter where you could actually pick slides and move them around. And then this item here is a really useful one. It's where you can start a slideshow, either from the beginning or the middle of the slideshow, and see how the transitions and everything is working. This saves you from always having to go up to the slideshow um, menu item and ribbon up here and find it. You can just get it down here. And then finally you have the zoom. I'm going to go back to normal view. Okay, so in your um, menu tab items, you have your home, which tends to be the kitchen sink, as I like to refer to it. So it has various font and paragraph functions or, you know, tasks that you could do on a slide. You also could select new slides. And this uh, Microsoft PowerPoint comes with some vari variable ideas here. So you open a document and it's in a title slide already, assuming you're going to create a brand new slide. You could also do two content where you could have a title for the page or you could pick up the title of the presentation. Then you can add text and or you can add items like inserting a table when you hover over these little icons in the click to add text box. If you click to add text, like over here, LJ was here, then these icons go away. But if you choose to um, add some smart art, then the text will go away. Let's grab one here. And then you'll have only the smart art. You also in the home tab, there are several others. And you could reuse existing slides and also, if you're in a slide and you really like it, not only could you reuse it, you could duplicate it and then go in and take stuff off of it except for what you want to keep duplicated and so on. The Insert tab gives you the chance to insert all sorts of things like pictures, screenshots, tables. You can also insert new slides from here as well as from the Home tab. You can insert icons, shapes, smart art charts from a, an Excel file, uh, forms from um, other, other uh, Microsoft forms items, uh, add-ins, text boxes, symbols, media. You could put voiceovers. You could put video clips in, all sorts of things. Draw lets you circle and grab things. Let's see if I grab something like this. It's like, whoa, there we go. And you can also 
use a ruler to, ah, it'd be kind of fun to, <laughs> look at this, all sorts of neat things you could do in there. Design, which I want to go back over here, oops, let's go back and turn off that ruler. Design gives you the chance to use themes and then variants of the themes. And then when you click on the little drop down arrow here for variants, then you can see the color palettes, the font palettes, the effects palettes like you would see in Word or Excel. You could change the slide size. That's about the only page setup you could do. You could format the background of a slide and you can even use a designer that will give you some design ideas if you don't have any. Many of these would be inside of PowerPoint as it exists, but you may also be able to get some offline. And you can open and close this panel by clicking that. Transitions are for when you want one slide to move to the next with some kind of transition effect. So you could always choose a transition like that. So that gives you some ideas there, and it gives you the chance to add sound to it, to decide how the transition will come in, how long it will be, and to apply it to one or to all slides. You can do animations, which seem like they're transitions, but they're not transitions from one slide to another. They're animations of an image. Maybe you bring in an image and it starts small and gets bigger, or you have something fade out when someone you think is done looking at it. Slideshow gives you the chance to test the slideshow from the beginning, from the current slide to rehearse it, to set it up, to rehearse timings, and whether you want to use subtitles or not, etc. Record gives you the chance to record text that you want to actually speak, and then you could ex uh, save it as a show or export as a video. Review gives you the chance to check your spelling, to use the thesaurus to check uh, for various words that you might want to make a change, to check your accessibility. View gives you a chance to view different aspects of a slideshow. So this is the actual slide that would go into a presentation with transitions and animations. But the outline view, um, this shows you the priorities of what will happen within a slide. The slide sorter is where I indicated that you can actually pick up slides and move them around. So say you've actually designed certain things and you realize your message isn't quite in the right order, you can go ahead and do a little movement there. There's a notes page, which you don't have to use in a slideshow, but if you want to have a image of the slide and then a place where a person watching the slideshow in a meeting can write into it, you can add create these. Slide masters give you a chance to do some really nitty gritty touching up of very specific slide elements for a theme. And it's not for the faint of heart um, and so on. Finally, the filed backstage area, which the Mac doesn't have. So the Mac usually will have to use the uh, either the Mac Apple or the Mac interface file and edit and window and, and some of those items um, to look for some of this stuff. But in, in Windows, you have your home, which is where we're at now. You have the info page that you, you may have seen in Word and Excel, where you can add metadata, see who's the author of the slideshow, inspect the presentation for accessibility or compatibility with older versions of PowerPoint, look at a version, a version history where you could save your slide show as a specific name in a specific location. You could save it as a PDF. So if you don't want it to actually be um, showing as transitions because you're not finished, but you want someone to get the gist of the show, you can send a PDF to say a team member um, in another location. You can look at the print page. So while slideshows aren't really set up to be printables, they can be printed. So um, you can set a printer to Microsoft PDF if you don't have a physical printer at home so that you can look at margins and so on. Um, you can export slideshows into different formats. You can create a video, you can create an animated GIF. So say you create one slide and you wanted to make an animated GIF um, as, as a meme, you can do that sort of thing. And then more means you can come down and look at your account information and you can come down and look at your options um, where you can make changes to how the program will work for you, um, how the autocorrect options work, some advanced items, 
like editing using a smart cut and paste, which is a default, um, you know, various other things you can look at in here as you become more familiar with the program. Like in Word and Excel, you can customize the ribbon, although until you are really proficient with PowerPoint and really know your ribbons, it's best not to mess with these, but instead to add things to your quick access toolbar. So for instance, turn auto save on and off is currently on my uh, quick bar up here, quick access toolbar, and I've never used that, so I'm going to remove it. I already know how to save with a shortcut key, so I'm going to remove that. I um, am going to keep the start from the beginning and smart art colors, but I could add things in here, uh, such as decreased font size added, things like that. Then when I click OK, those changes will happen up here. So overall, that's just a, a hopefully a fairly short uh, overview of the Microsoft PowerPoint user interface. Thanks for joining me, and I hope this was helpful to you.